Hey, how's it going? Machop on the last episode was honestly a fantastic run, but it wasn't without its flaws. I mentioned Mankey as the other pre-evolved fighting type, and at the end of last week's video, I did mention that I may have overlooked some things. It has a lot of redeeming qualities that I honestly wish Machop had during its run, but getting a sub 4 hour time is still a very tall task. Do I think Mankey could be a 3 hour and 30 minute beast? Probably not, and having these magical runs 2 weeks in a row is unlikely likely, but just like with Machop, I do see a lot of potential in this weird pig monkey that's just always angry. Like with all my runs, there will be some high spots, and there will be some flaws, and just in general some things that I didn't anticipate, but we'll go over all of that soon enough. But before we begin, I do solo run content fairly often, and if that is of interest to you, consider subscribing to the channel to help it grow. Likes and comments help me break into that YouTube algorithm, so if you are someone who normally doesn't interact, or just doesn't have anything to say, scroll down and type in Hymns Mad to show a little support. Now with that out of the way, sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda pop, and let's dive in and see if Mankey has what it takes to take the fighting crown in Kanto. Right from the start, I make sure my Mankey has some good IVs for the upcoming journey, and for this video, I'm going with Hymns Mad for the name, because Hymns a mad little monkey, and hopefully that translates into a great run today. Immediately right from the start, I have a few things to address. One that's obvious, and a couple that I kind of overlooked that will put Mankey behind the curve in terms of chasing a high spot on the tier list. The very first thing comes into play immediately, and it's that the starting learn set is just vastly inferior to Machop. You only have access to Scratch, and Lear. Scratch isn't great, and obviously scratching down Brock isn't an easy solution as we've seen from a video like Psyduck, so let's talk about the other challenges that this early game is going to present. I don't dare take on the optional rival fight from the start with only Scratch, so the only thing to really do is to progress to the bug catchers, and as this is happening, this is kind of where I overlooked something massive. I've brought up the leveling groups in other videos and how the names are kind of just nonsense, but Mankey is in the medium fast group, whereas Machop was in the medium slow group. Counterintuitive to what you would think, medium fast is significantly slower in the early levels and I did not anticipate this slowing down my progress as much as it's going to do when I was first planning this run. That means that when I'm done with all the trainer battles and some wild Pokemon, I'm only at level 10 and if you remember, Machop was at level 14 when it finished the junior trainer at Brock and I was kind of counting on Mankey to be that same level when I was doing my first look. This means I go back to the strategy that I uncovered in the Zubat run, and that's fighting the Junior Trainer, beating the Diglett, letting the Sandshrew faint me, and repeating that process until I'm level 15, and honestly this just feels a lot faster than grinding random Metapods. This goes on for a while as you might expect, but it's not too bad, and I'd like to just take this part to quickly say that in the yellow version, Mankey is one of those Pokemon that sort of exists to make Brock easier since you start out with a Pikachu, and that means that it does get low kick at level 9, whereas in red and blue, we just don't get it at all. The loss of low kick from Machop doesn't look too big on paper, but as we progress through the run, it's just one of those minor little details that subtly hold back Mankey just a little bit. But back to the matter at hand, Mankey is doing my patented wideout on the junior trainer strategy, and while it's not ideal, I think this strategy in all future runs for pre-Brock grinds is going to be a must, especially when you have a move like Leer like Mankey does to ensure that you just can't accidentally faint the Sandshrew. I get up to level 15, and now we get our coveted Karate Chop that we've been waiting on, and that means it's time for Brock. I feel like I went over a lot of things that just make Mankey straight up worse than Machop, but let's get a little more positive real quick. The one huge advantage and the thing that I hope that would propel Mankey ahead as the run goes on is the fact that it has the same attack as Machop, but it has double the speed at 70. Without going through the numbers, all you really need to know is that this makes Karate Chop have over a 100% chance to crit, and while the Machop run was kind of marred a little bit because Karate Chop only had about a 50 54% chance to crit and it just felt awful to use. The fact that you have the full potential of a strong move like Karate Chop this early in the game but not having to sacrifice your attack stat was my one huge draw that made me want to actually do this run. The footage just kind of played in the background and I did fail the first attempt on Brock but it is what it is. I get low in the successful attempt on the second try but having Leer to avoid bide damage and having that consistent crit from Karate Chop gets us by and way less attempts than it 
and took my chop. Unfortunately, attempts, resets, and real time, they aren't metrics that I use for my tier list. And the fact of the matter is that although Mankey has a respectable time of 47 minutes, it's more than double the time behind Machop's swift 22 minute time at this point and we have our work cut out for us. From there, Mankey shows that he's the real choppy boy and Karate Chop with some scratches are enough to easily dominate the trainers up to and inside of Mount Moon. But I do need to pick up Mega Punch because Karate Chop and Scratch alone just aren't enough to dominate and I need that extra high damage move to get this run rolling. In Cerulean, rival number two is the next objective and with a guaranteed crit in our back pockets, this one isn't too bad. It's not completely clean because I do end up getting a little low because while Mankey has a fantastic speed and attack, it definitely doesn't have the bulk that Machop does and its lower HP and defense is something that we'll be dealing with as the run goes on. It is a one shot victory and that's always promising to see. From there I press on towards Bill's house and this is the point of the game where you really feel the effects of not having low kick. I didn't think it would be a big deal but there are a few fights like this Onyx defeat that you're watching here where it could have been great to have. But guys, here I make a big mistake and depending on the circumstances, sometimes I'll play a few runs, I'll keep the footage and then I'll edit them later. So sometimes it's a little bit before I finish up a video and the point from when I sit down to play a new run, I'll forget to do things and here I forget to anchor myself to the Cerulean Pokestop and I have to manually walk there rather than having the usual escape rope trick. The only alternative to correct this was really to start over and I just didn't want to do that. Overall, it's probably a few minute mistake at most, but it's worth noting and it did bother me a good bit, but it's just something to keep in mind when the run is over and we're just going to keep pressing on. This means it's time for the second gym fight and despite Mankey having a clear slower start than some of our elite runs, I can't deny the way that it's handling some of the fights. It's pretty impressive. As far as real life time goes, Mankey is cruising and outside of the odd situation here or there or maybe Brock taking a couple of attempts, I'm still one shotting pretty much everything and Misty isn't an exception. Crits from her are scary but I do get a little bit of luck here when Starmie just gets an X defend and goes for two tackles and then I just chop my way to victory for another win. Very cool. Just like some of the other things that I've talked about that I did not anticipate, the next one was something I initially didn't think was going to be a big deal either. From the rocket battle playing in the background you might have guessed that it's that Mankey has to use Dig and can't learn Earthquake like Machop could. Dig isn't a bad move by any means but it's essentially a two turn Earthquake. Machop relied on Earthquake's raw power a lot and if Mankey needs it just as much the extra turn could start to add up slowly but we'll just keep an eye on it for now. Let's jump ahead to the SSN and since Karate Chop is a guaranteed crit and Mankey won't get a badge boosting move I'm gonna skip body slam maybe I shouldn't have but I do still pick up the rare candy behind the gentleman with the fire types. Rival number three is on deck and there's just not much more to say about these early rival fights. I feel like I've said the sentence if you avoid the sand attack then you're good about a hundred times but it's always true. I didn't go into the fight at full health so the Kadabra could have ended it all but the AI works in my favor it goes for bad moves and it's chop time once again as these early battles struggle to keep pace with Mankey's high DPS. I see the SSN off and from there I immediately head towards Lieutenant Surge but for the second run in a roll I actually get the trash can puzzle on the very first attempt and that just feels very weird considering sometimes I do reset a ton for some of these trash can puzzles to go right. As for the gym battle itself Mankey continues to impress. Karate Chop is just going to continue to get better since crit damage does scale with your level and it's enough to cleanly get past the first two Pokemon and since Mankey has Dig, it's all that's needed for Raichu. Thunderbolt would have been pretty scary and you can see that even the weaker Thundershock does a decent chunk of damage but I guess we'll never know as I cruise to another win. It's also worth bringing up that Mankey can learn Thunderbolt. It doesn't ever come into play in the run. I don't use it but it's an interesting coverage move. Even though Mankey's special is really weak, 35 and Rock Slide will serve you much better in my opinion. Speaking of Thunderbolt, and looking ahead at Rock Tunnel, Thunderbolt would have probably been the smart play to temporarily put on Mankey just to make these couple of Slowpoke battles easier. Confusion just does a ton of damage and I failed the first Keybone and Slowpoke battle a few times and even though the second fight with the Lone Slowpoke almost defeats me as well, I do get past it but I do think if I were to optimize the run, Thunderbolt for these two situations would have smoothed it out. I have Dig for the Hiker so let's just skip ahead to Celadon. This one's looking like another Mimic run so getting the Poke Daw is very important here and Rock Slide from trading the little girl with Sodi Pop is also pivotal to get that fantastic Rock Slide coverage move and at this point we pretty much have all the damaging moves for the run and I'm ready to pick up the pace a little bit. The obvious place to go from here is the rocket hideout and since I'm attempting to make up what time I can it's straight
straight to Giovanni after minimum battles. While this fight isn't awful, I do fail the first attempt. I think it was at this precise point where I realized that the tiny things like not having low kick and later not getting earthquake are just going to start slowing me down slightly over the course of the run over a lot of battles. Some food for thought here is that a stabbed low kick actually does more damage than dig wood. If you look at this situation, 50 base power on low kick, getting a stab bonus bringing it up to 75, and then super effective bringing that to 150 base power, and then comparing that to dig doing 100 base power, then 200 for super effective, and that spread over two turns, and you can see slowly why low kick is more superior. I just can't stress enough how much I overlooked these two seemingly small details for Mankey, and they're just going to slowly start adding up. I'm not sure how many of you really care about these little tiny aspects of the run, but it's things like this that kind of define one Pokemon over the other, and it's just things that I didn't consider. Just like with the Machop run, I do try Erica real quick just to see if I can maybe squeak by, and honestly, it's not too bad. I think I could have gotten it by if I just repeated it over and over, but just like with Machop, I didn't save beforehand. I get poisoned on the victory bell, and it's just a little too much to overcome after the Tangela just stalls it out a little bit and the poison damage starts to add up. I do reset, and we'll come back to this one later. For now, let's just stomp our old buddy rival number four and feel better about ourselves. Rock Slide is busted in this fight, and Karate Chop always crits. That's all you need to know. I will say that I still have Mega Punch, and I have nothing really to replace it with. I probably should have definitely picked up Body Slam since it's just a flat upgrade. It's not a big deal because I'm not really using it a whole lot, but Mega Punch, it in runs, it just quickly loses its luster. It becomes inferior the longer the run goes on. Its role to me personally is just to smooth out the early games of Pokemon that have limited moves. After that, I finish up the tower and I get the Poke Flute. And here I decide that it's time to go ahead and fight Erica again since I'm a little bit stronger, I'm a little bit older, and I'm a little bit wiser since our last attempt a few minutes ago. Dig does let us avoid a turn one Razor Leaf, and I don't one shot the bell, but all I take in return is some wrap damage. Eventually, I'm able to get it down, and like with 99% of all Erica fights, if you get past Victory Bell, then the rest of the fight is just significantly easier. I do take some minor damage here and there, but getting this out of the way now is really good so I won't randomly just forget it later. The obvious choice from here is to make our way down to Fuchsia on our bike. Doing another fighting run back to back does make me feel like I'm repeating myself on some of the same things, but I try to always approach my commentary from the view that I have to assume there's going to be a viewer just starting on this specific video, maybe they've skipped the other ones or something like that. But with that said, Koga's Gym is the place where types like Poison or Fighting with big psychic weaknesses generally first encounter their first strong psychic damage. And I must say that Mankey does exceedingly well. Being fast and doing a lot of damage is generally the best remedy for this kind of stuff, and Mankey excels in those two categories. It's not too bad, and that leads us to the badge battle with Koga. I failed the first attempt, or rather I probably should say that I voluntarily reset the game to make Koga act right. Coughing is just whatever, but the muck does immediately hit the perfect luck. It disables Dig, and from there it decides that it's just going to go for straight minimizes. I do miss my Karate Chop after it does two, and pardon my French here, but I don't have the time to waste playing these types of bullshit little silly games with the AI, so I'm immediately resetting we're going to the next attempt. I'm not dealing with it. I hate it. The next attempt, things go far less annoying. Dick isn't a one shot, just like Earthquake wasn't on the last run, and it is a little annoying to just barely miss out on the attack to smooth this out. Couple that with Dig taking an extra turn and the battle was just overall longer than it could have been. I do get poisoned and I actually take a pretty hefty amount of damage, but I've said a lot of negative things about Dig up to this point, but you know where this is going. There's one very specific and niche use for Dig in these solo runs and I absolutely love it when you dig underground, Weezing uses self-destruct and it just kills itself for nothing and you get a free victory when you would have otherwise maybe lost. And that's honestly what Koga gets for just spanning minimize on the first attempt. Fuck you. The normal route isn't ideal for fighting types, so once again we're changing it up. I do pick up the good rod inside of town, and then I go fish up a goldine so that I can have access to surf, and we can put Saffron off for as long as I possibly can. It's time for the most brisk of swims down to Cinnabar, and I also battle all the optional trainers for some easy experience since our moveset is really set up to be great against fire types. After a little bit of Tombstoner, brother. 
it's immediately time for the Blaine fight. The first attempt goes very poor. The TLDR of this is that I get fire spin locked from both the Ponyta and the Rapidash, and I barely fail to knock them out. And honestly, getting fire spin or wrap down to zero is honestly one of the worst ways to lose a battle in Generation 1 games. But like a lot of Blaine battles, sometimes his AI can just be among the worst in the game. This time the battle was very easy, and the only real thing of note in this entire fight is that I take a growl from the Rapidash. While it does hinder my attack and makes things much tougher for the Arcanine, it just goes for bad moves and eventually it goes down. This is pretty much your typical run as far as Blaine goes, and this is pretty much the reason I came here. We got super effective moves, he's a fire type, let's move on. Sylphco is the last place to go, and if you remember, this is where Machop specifically struggled and he had to grind and level up and waste a good bit of time. This is where I thought Mackie could be better than Machop, and if we want to make up any of that lost time from earlier in the run, this is where Mankey needs to make a stand and prove its worth. This means after the bare minimum, I head towards rival number 5 and let's see if Mankey can prove itself here. Pidgeot is first and we outspeed it, that's great, and unfortunately Rock Slide is not a one shot. This means that we do take a wing attack and obviously it's going to crit and it's going to do about 70% of our total health. Very cool. I do finish it off, but saying that this is now an uphill battle is an understatement. And I'd like to think that I'm up for the challenge, but Gyarados just wants to be a prick. It survives a rock slide, it goes for a hydro pump, and it's just gonna crit, and that's it. We die. Let's go back for round number two. This time Pidgeot goes very similar, except that this time it doesn't crit, and we are much more healthy going forward, and thank god for that. And you know the drill with Gyarados. It's gonna survive a rock slide, but this time it goes for Dragon Rage. The flat 40 HP damage is pretty significant considering Mankey has a very low HP stat, and once again we are in an uphill battle with tough Pokemon still to come. Now, with that said, here's Growlithe, and let's just quickly one-shot it, get it out of the way, and we can talk about, we can let the adults talk about the rest of the battle. Get out of here. Here's the real test for Mankey. Alakazam is the raid boss of the run, but just like I thought, Mankey's speed is high enough to outspeed. That's great. I have to go for Dig since it's our hardest hitting move, but it is enough for a one-shot, and that's fantastic. That takes us to Venusaur. With Dig, I'm kind of always playing this guessing game in my head. Will it go for this move? Should I throw a Karate Chop, then do a turn two Dig so I avoid a potentially more deadly move. I decide to dig on turn one and I avoid a razor leaf so that's good but the damage looks like it's going to be a three shot. That's not great. It goes for a poison powder. It connects. Now I'm on the clock. I'm getting low. From here I decide to go straight karate chops because taking extra poison damage isn't an option. Venusaur does go for a vine whip and Mankey barely hangs on with three HP. The poison damage to finish us off is just looming in the air but with one more precisely placed karate chop Mankey does does take this fight on the second attempt by the skin of its teeth by one turn. Honestly, doing this fight this early without grinding is just what this run needed to give it a shot of adrenaline to keep my hopes up for maybe hitting another sub 4 hour time. As for Giovanni number 2, this fight is a one shot, but I do get close to failing. I have dig for all but one of his Pokemon, and let me just talk about Kangaskhan for a minute. I never have. This thing is an absolute menace for me lately, so something I've never done. I actually looked up its stats. I had to do a quick look up because it was just always critting me and I've never looked at it. And what I found is that this thing is actually pretty impressive. It's got 90 base speed. It's got really high HP, attack, defense. The only one knock on it is that its special is a little low and the best moves that it's learned are special. But honestly, I've never really given Kangaskhan a thought. It looks like a pretty decent Pokemon, but honestly a lot of those normal types like Chansey and Tauros and Kangaskhan itself, uh, they're all pretty underrated from Gen 1 in my opinion. Uh, but if you like Kangaskhan and you think maybe it should do have its own little how fast run comment below tell me with team rocket out of everybody's life I do pick up mimic for later and now it's time for one of the harder battles in the run in Sabrina the major difference this time is all speed like I said in the previous rival fight Kadabra isn't an issue and surprisingly enough it's Mr. Mime that does get off the heavy damage since it can actually survive one of our moves. I get a lucky crit on the Venomoth, so I'm not sure if Dig could one-shot it, but let's take a look at the real challenge here. Unfortunately, I don't outspeed Alakazam with a mere three-level advantage, but it does only go for the pathetic Psy Wave, and it does next to nothing. I go for Dig, and in a heartbreaker, it just barely misses being a one-hit. Then I get hit with a Psy Beam, and that's it. it. Takes us out. The next attempt, it turns out that Dig is not a one-shot on Venomoth. It's not really that close. It's gonna crit us on its turn with some heavy super effective damage and that takes us all the way down to 19 HP and this this is basically a reset right but once again Alakazam goes for Psy 
save. Not only that, it misses, and a Karate Chop does really good damage. Now I'm gonna need some luck, and I get it in the form of Reflect. This means that Karate Chop will just ignore the stat changes anyway, and be enough to take this battle. And that's back to back tough fights that Mankey has done in two attempts on each, and honestly that's pretty impressive. And if anything, these are the defining parts of Mankey's run, and I'm very proud of it. Especially when you consider that Machop had to reset so much in the run. From there, I'm just booking it to the end of the game as fast as I possibly can, because I just saved a ton of time, and I'm hopeful that maybe we can turn this thing around to be great. Giovanni is the last gem, and honestly, Giovanni's been kind of weird for Mankey this run. And this fight's no exception. You would think it would do great, and without going to in-depth commentary on each individual matchup, I will say that I took a growl from Doug Trio, which really hurt my damage output. I'm still able to deal super effective damage back, but after taking some chip damage and then ultimately a thrash from Nidoking, King, I'm down to a mere 11 HP while our attack is debuffed. Rhydon comes in and one stomp is all it would have taken, but all it does is tail whips, it gets a guard spec and it just goes for a failed horn drill and I just slowly dig some holes under it and we take another first turn win. This one was very slow, but it's over with and now the most important part of all solo runs is swiftly approaching, but first I need to take this time to learn Mimic to complete our move set before we move on to the next rival battle. Just like rival number five this fight gives me some real deja vu with mimic i want to take agility but hold off on fully setting up since i haven't leveled up recently and i feel like i will later here the ai can choose between flying or psychic moves and here it chooses wing attack and just like the seal fight it crits and it pretty much blacks both of my eyes and it's gonna make this fight nearly impossible to cut a long story short i do progress to the alakazam and while i can outspeed it with the agilities i go for karate chop for some reason and i just die. I think Dig would have definitely been the play because it's boosted and does more damage and I'm just stupid sometimes and in this case I die for my decisions. The next attempt I just get bit by Gyarados and that puts me in too deep of a hole to really climb out of. Notice that I do level up after the Gyarados so that's some prime agility boosting time and it's good to know. On the third try it's more of the same. I just get put into a hole by the Pidgeot. Rhyhorn comes in and it actually does some decent damage to me and the Gyarados does get some more damage off and it just finishes me off with a hydro pump. This is honestly the first fight in a long time where Mankey just hasn't beaten it real fast but the situation isn't that bad. The main adjustment that you have to make here is that you don't have to mimic agility on the very first Pokemon especially when it's as volatile as the Pidgeot matchup is. Going straight rock slides means that the AI has one less turn to do something bad and hurt you and overall it just ups your chances of getting through this one without getting chip down and this round it goes exactly as planned. As for the Rhyhorn, this is a prime example of Dig just being slower and the absence of low kick stalling fights several extra turns over the Machop run. A single dig isn't enough and even though it's low, a Karate Chop crit isn't enough to finish it off and I have to take another additional turn to take it out. It's not ideal but it's not really that bad, let's move on. Gyarados can be annoying and we know that it can survive one rock slide. On its turn it goes for a pesky Hydro Pump but fortunately it misses and we take it out after. This has pretty much been the best case scenario so far minus the Rhyhorn taking some extra turns and afterwards I level up and that's key here. And with Growlithe and a fresh level up, this is why we waited on Mimic. Growlithe also has agility as well and since it doesn't have a flying type attack like Pidgeot, this is the safest place to set up. Growlithe cannot hurt you, it will only go for agility and you are free to fully set up before moving on to the fight and there's just zero chance that we'll lose our badge boost since we just leveled up. Next is the Alakazam and with the agilities I outspeed but I don't one shot. At first I was kind of shocked by this since I always talk about the fragility of Alakazam but remember that I am actually out leveled here. I should have gone for dig rather than rock slide and I do waste another turn by going for dig after that but I get through it whatever. And you would think that this one is in the back since I'm at full health through all the Pokemon but the Venusaur but it's really close. I go for dig. I avoid a vine whip and it's looking like Dig's not going to be a two shot. I've said that line a lot in my runs. But the more pressing matter here is I take a razor leaf straight to the jaw. It's almost a 100 to 0 one shot but Mankey is so mad that I hang on with a mere 4 HP and what was a sure victory is quick
quickly turning into a bad situation. I go for a dig and I don't know if it'll be enough, but I hope that I'm going to avoid an attack. It goes for a growth, it survives the hit, and now it's up to the AI. It connects with a poison powder, but I do finish it off on the next turn with a karate chop. This fight ends almost identical to rival number 5, and all I can really say is that Razor Leaf hurts, and although the fight went nearly perfect, it just shows how quick things can really go off the rails in these runs. But it's over, that's a victory, let's look ahead. The Elite 4 is all that's left, and Mankey is doing very well. As far as concerns go, I do have a couple. I think that Agatha can be an issue, but with high speed and attack, I don't think it'll be awful, but the real issue will specifically be the champion fight with his Pidgeot and Alakazam duo. We've seen how it went in the Machop run, it wasn't great, but I'm hoping it's much better here, and that's enough talk. Before diving in, it's time to use the majority of our rare candies, and honestly Mankey's a little under leveled, especially when you're looking at an apples to apples comparison with Machop. I'm about 5 levels lower, but I do save a couple of rare candies for later mimic tactics to reset our experience, but it's time for Lorelei, let's see how it goes. I'm a ripe level 58 for this fight, but with decent base speed and attack, I'm not too worried. Dugong is a piece of cake for Pokemon with a psychic weakness. It'll go for rest, so just use your first turn with a chop, anything will do. It'll use rest and you have 3 turns to finish it off. Rock Slide does heavy damage, it's more than enough, but I do also use a dig here to save some PP, but it's just an easy opening to the Elite Four. Next up is Cloyster, and it's always annoying. I go for dig, and it's pretty pathetic damage, that was a mistake. It does miss on its turn, and then I just crit with a Rock Slide and we move along in the fight just like that. Slowbro is third, and I'll make this one quick. This is one of those situations where given its moveset, it's only going to go for Amnesia since it's a psychic type move, and with Mimic, we want to take Amnesia and use it for ourselves. Something I have contemplated for this situation, since it actually comes up a decent amount, is taking Withdrawal instead of Amnesia. On slower Pokemon, three additional turns to badge boost for speed could help out, but that's just something I've been kind of thinking about. Anyways, it's a battle you literally really can't lose and we have 3 amnesia boost going forward. And as for the jinx, I'm boosted and I should have went for rock slide but I used dig. The result would be the same but I guess I've wasted so many turns on dig so far, what's another turn? Finally we get to the lapras and honestly this fight is kind of silky smooth. Mankey's base speed is pretty nice and at the end of the day the only damage I take is a single body slam and Lorelei overall is just a clean and consistent fight for Mankey, that's great. Speaking of clean and consistent, you guys know I don't like to talk about Bruno. I specifically don't like going in depth on this fight and why am I stalling here? Why don't I just make a joke or a funny zinger and have the footage sped up and we can just get on to Agatha? Well guys, it's with a heavy heart that I tell you today that for the first time in months, Bruno claims a victory against me. Things are pretty standard on the Onyx, so let's just talk about the tragedy here before I start crying. On the Hitmonchan, this is where disaster takes place. I go for a Karate Chop, it does good damage but anytime you use a normal or fighting move in Gen 1, you kind of open yourself up for counter. I take double the damage that I just dealt, and it's way more than enough to utterly humiliate me and force me into a reset. And for the last attempt, let's skip ahead a little bit, I almost lose again. And that's right guys, I almost lose to Bruno two times in the same video. The real issue is that I have low defensive stats, and I just don't do enough damage here. Hitmonlee almost kicks my head off, but that really doesn't work. That saying doesn't work because Mankey's kind of just a, a ball with arms and legs, but still, it does get me down to 3 HP. There's still a couple more Pokemon after that, but poor AI choices do get me through the fight. The other attempts after this are much smoother, but let's be real, it's way more interesting to show me struggling on what is usually a joke fight, and no one really wants to just watch a clean sweep for every fight. Everyone give Bruno a round of applause for getting another dub in the win column. What a historic day. Agatha is next, and this is one of the few runs where Bruno's kind of more tough than her. Mankey's decent speed means I can get off a dig before the first Gengar makes its move, and it can't survive the blow. It is unfortunate that Golbat can survive a rock slide, but it's kind of rare for it to just be a huge problem. It was in the Machop run, but it's not really here. From there, I do outspeed the Haunter and the Arbok. I have access to super effective dig for the rest of the fight, and moving on to the end, the final Gengar 
Rhaegar is the exception. I don't outspeed it, but Nightshade is its only damaging move. And if you're at full health, that means that there's no way it can just one shot you. I will get my attacks off no matter what. It does take an extra move to take out, but overall it's a very easy fight and you're not really going to hear me complain about that. This one is very consistent. I never lose this one. Moving on to Lance, this is where being a fighting type really comes in handy. I'm not going to go over the individual matchups for this fight because a lot of you probably know how this one's going to go. I will say that it comes down to the Gyarados and the only thing that can make you reset is if it one shots you with a crit. In this footage it just misses, but like we've seen from the Machop video or even a video like Ghastly, you could theoretically and probably fairly easy be 1 HP and still pull this fight off if you have a weakness to Psychic like Mankey does. The three remaining dragons just can't hurt you and you'll have access to agility from Mimic to ensure that you outspeed the Aerodactyl and you have a super effective and boosted Rock Slide at that point. It's not really a problem. Ultimately, it's nearly an unlosable fight barring what happens on the Gyarados and so far, it looks like the Elite Four has been a breeze for Mankey outside of that defeat to Bruno which honestly is just a weird sentence to say. Now it's time for the champion fight and let's just jump into it. The huge difference between Machop and Mankey is that Mankey outspeeds the Pidgeot and on this first attempt I just crit with a rock slide and that's as good as an attempt's really gonna get. The real problem like we always knew it would be is the Alakazam and I don't outspeed it. With Mankey having low HP and special a non-critical hit psychic is enough to 100 to 0 us and you guys can already start to paint a picture of this fight, the problems that are going to start happening, and maybe what needs to ultimately happen. Here's a hint, it's luck. On the second attempt, you see what happens when I don't crit with Rock Slide? I'm going to take a move. There are a couple of outs for this fight. If it goes for like a mirror move or charges up a sky attack, you can still get through this fight while taking little to no damage. But on this attempt, it just crits us with a wing attack, but that's okay because it really doesn't matter how much health you have for Alakazam. It just takes me out quickly and you know that this is going to repeat a lot and unless I want to level up a ton and lose out on having a great in game time I'm going to need some luck here so for the sake of maybe having a quicker editing time let's just skip ahead to what ultimately works I will say that this fight took a ton of times to get through because these first two Pokemon are just a nightmare but like all runs with enough patience it is possible to get the right set of events so in this final attempt I just rock slide crit the Pidgey and that's all there really is to say. Like I said, there are multiple scenarios to get through this one and it's really not bad overall. It's not the problem. As for the Alakazam, it is the problem. It's all about being patient and just waiting for that right attempt. I struggled with the idea of if I should even bother mimicking recover, but I do opt to go that route just like with the Machop route and you're going to see that it doesn't matter once again. It misses a side beam and that allows us to take recover to continue on in the fight. And from there, it's just a matter of getting some digs off. You don't need consecutive reflects like Machop, but you do need a miss or a reflect on the turn before or after it. With the first reflect, it goes for a side beam while I'm underground, and Dig's not going to be a two shot with reflect up. After that, I get another reflect, it goes for psychic while I'm underground, and I get a very fortuitous crit, and that just finishes the battle right there. It's another video where I just needed some luck, and I don't feel great about it, but it is what it is. It didn't take as long in this video as it did for Machop chop I'll say that. Looking ahead at Rhydon, it is weak to dig and there's not really much that can go wrong here. It takes two digs overall and this is honestly a lull in what has been a pretty long road to get to this point. Next up is Gyarados and I missed the opening rock slide. This means that I'll need two more to hit to finish the fight barring a crit and fortunately it just goes for back to back leers and nothing disastrous happens because honestly failing this fight here after all the attempts to get Alakazam to finally cooperate it might have made me rage quit or decide to sacrifice in game time to just level up, but thankfully that didn't happen. Arcanine is the penultimate Pokemon, and just like with Rhydon, it's weak to dig, and overall it's not too much of a problem. I do one shot it, and I think that has to do with the badge boost from Tail Whips and Leer, but either way, it's on to the last Pokemon, and let's hope that nothing goes wrong. Venusaur comes in, and I'm hesitant on what I want to go for. I eventually decide I'm going to go for dig, and during my underground turn, it charges up a solar beam. This gets me be very worried and the very next turn I do get a dig crit meaning that all I need is one more but solar beam is ready to go it lets it loose and it blasts me for a massive 132 damage at that point it's just very fortunate that I do outspeed and I'm very 
unlucky that I crit on the first turn. I go for a dig. While I'm underground, I avoid a lethal razor leaf, and the damage is ultimately enough to finish the run. And that's it. Mankey has done it, and I'm getting tired of these awful champion fights, but to be fair, Mankey didn't struggle much in the run at all, and this was the one true time where I had to do a couple of dozen times to get through it, so I'm not really too upset about it. But how did Mankey do? Was it able to overcome its slower start and bring it back to be in that top tier of pre-evolved Pokemon? Well, kind of. Yes and no, I guess. Uh, let's take a look. Mankey finishes with a level of 64 and falls just a little short with a final time of 4 hours and 14 minutes. And I just say short in the fact that it's not a top 2 run, it's not a sub 4 hour run. I don't really want to take anything away from Mankey. I sometimes mention metrics that don't really factor into the tier list like real life time and resets, but if I did, Mankey's run would be greatly improved over some of these other runs. It was a very efficient run and outside of rare exceptions like the final fight of the game, I pretty much one or two shot like 99% of the battles in the run, and you can contrast that to a run like Machop or Bellsprout, where they just had to reset a lot. It was very plentiful, and it was required often in a lot of spots. Not only that, I have to give Mankey some credit as well for finishing its run tied for third in terms of the lowest final level. Just getting within about 15 minutes of a sub 4 hour time and doing it at the level it did is a great accomplishment, and I'm going to put it at number 4 on the list. Honestly, at first, First it was a toss up between it and Slowpoke for that third slot. One finished 7 minutes faster and one finished 7 levels lower. I ultimately I'm going to give the nod to Slowpoke, not because it's my favorite, but because I value in game time a little more and it's hard to ignore the fact that Slowpoke one shot the entire Elite Four without resetting once and that's pretty rare in these runs. At the end of the day, back to back runs finishing at number 2 and number 4 is pretty impressive, although I think I feel like trying so many attempts on the champion fight and not leveling up to make it consistent. I just, it could be seen as not necessarily being in the spirit of how I like to do things normally, but I do get the feeling that even if Machop and Mankey went up to level 75 or 80, they would still need a little bit of luck on the Alakazam, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I'm fine with how things worked out. I honestly didn't think there would be many runs left that would do this well outside of maybe Poliwag, and I've been holding off on that one because I know how it's going to go, but I'm very surprised. Outside of that, looking ahead, I'm I'm looking at maybe Dratini as far as finishing up tops I haven't done yet, and as far as how fast runs go, Kangaskhan looks interesting, I'd be interested in Dragonite, but the top of my how fast curiosity is probably going to be Primate, uh, Mankey's evolution, because I think that Pokemon could slap. I'm interested to see how it would do. But at this point, I'm rambling. I had fun with Mankey, and that's just gonna do it for me. If you made it this far, I appreciate you, and I'm glad you took the time to watch my little video. I'd absolutely love for all my videos to take off and get to the point to where doing this kind of stuff would be viable financially. But after, we're getting close to a year of doing these kind of runs, and it's not looking likely, but I still enjoy it. It's still a hobby. But as always, guys, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye.